Good morning, everybody. My name is Cynthia Kratzley, and I am going to teach you today about polymer clay. Polymer clay is this great product that is not actually clay at all. It's made out of polyvinyl chloride, which is made from petroleum. So it's not made from earthen clays like traditional things. But what it is, it's a modeling material that is colorful and soft. It can be pretty soft or you can get kinds that are a little bit firmer. And you can bake it in your oven to fire it at 250 degrees. The great thing about it is you can cover other objects with it. Like you can use it to cover small pieces of glass to make like a candle holder. That works great. I've had students before cover big like gorgeous glasses. I, get, I think that's beautiful just to use as something ornamental. It's not really safe to drink out of. Or you can cover other things that you can bake in a home oven, like you can cover pencils or you can cover anything that you can bake to 250 degrees. Also, prescription bottles work well. It's a hard enough plastic that you can use it. So the important thing about it is that you should always wash your hands after using it and don't eat or drink anything while you're using it because those small little cells from the polyvinyl chloride could enter your system and will stay there forever. You don't want that. Let's talk about storage too. Sometimes it reacts poorly with plastics. So I would not store it in any sort of Tupperware container because over time it somehow chemically reacts and it like makes the Tupperware container melt. So sometimes I will store it in like a little homemade paper box or a paper bag or a plastic bag does work as well. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to make cane designs that you can then use on other objects. So what you're going to need is something to be a little rolling pin. Sometimes I like my favorite marker. And you'll need something to cut the clay with. Sometimes I will just use a flat razor blade that I've put a big wad of tape on the top for. Sometimes you can use a thin kitchen knife. They also make really large blades, especially for polymer clay. So whatever you can get a thin cut with. And then if you want to make any beads, I recommend having a toothpick. That is very useful as well. So you'll want to start with clean hands. And I do want to tell you that if you touch a darker color and then touch a lighter color, it can messy up the surface. So you might want to wash your hands frequently. So let's talk about a cane. What is a cane? A cane is a long length of clay that has a design in one end but that design goes through the entire length of the clay so that whenever you cut the cane, whether it's round or circular, that design is still in the center. Like here's a bigger one that's kind of a flower shape. So you can see that when we cut it, that design goes all the way through. This is an ancient technique that was originally created by people working with glass. Some of the oldest ones are Egyptian and they were made with long rods of glass embedded together. You can actually see some great examples at the Corning Museum of Glass. So we're gonna use those cane slices to put on our objects, whether it's a glass object or whether we make some beads out of it. Sometimes you can just make little slices and then you have the design on each side of the bead. You can do a lot of things and you can experiment. But let me show you how we're gonna do it. I want you to think about it, kind of like making a sushi roll, or maybe you've made a delicious pumpkin roll before with a pumpkin cake and the cream, yum, and then every time you slice it, you have that design. So, we're gonna do, first of all, the jelly roll, which is two or more colors that are rolled up. I hope you can see those directions. Hopefully you'll all have one of these little handouts. I have mine covered in plastic, so that it doesn't stick as well. So if you're using just one that's paper, just be gentle so that it doesn't stick too much to the paper. You could even put down a layer of like wax paper if you want, that could be helpful to work on. You don't want it to stain things. Sometimes if it sits on something a long time, like a wooden surface, it would make a stain. So again, be careful with it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna do something called conditioning my clay. Depending on what brand you buy, you might have softer polymer clay or you might have a really firm polymer clay. Sometimes I'll roll mine and the heat from my hands 
will make it softer and more pliable. And what I want to do to make my jelly roll is I want to flatten my clay at first and I want to get a piece that's kind of square or rectangular. So I will kind of stretch it in that direction first. Then I will use my handy dandy rolling pin, aka marker. So I'm just kind of stretching it to keep it kind of square. And you can see this polymer clay I have has a little bit of like sparkle to it. Quite lovely. So you can buy all kinds of colors. You can blend colors together to make new colors. This one has some blending and it actually has a slightly marbleized look to it. But that's okay with me. So what I'm doing is I'm rolling it thin and even. And I'm pretty happy with that. And now what I want to do is I want to trim it so it's as perfectly rectangular as possible. So craftsmanship and your precision and attention to detail will be rewarded with a quality cane. So be as precise as you possibly can. So I have one little rectangle there. And so I'm gonna use a little chunk of clay of a different color. I'm gonna go a different color and different value because when these canes get smaller, they're gonna get more detailed closer together, and if they're too similar in color, they're gonna to blend together too much. So I'm gonna use some really opposite colors. And I'm using pieces that are about the same size. I'm kind of using chunks that might be the size of a little delicious cheese cube, or maybe a single die from a Monopoly game. So this one, I'm afraid, might not have been as big, but I'm gonna stretch it. So I'm rolling, rolling. And this one's definitely not as large as my turquoisey one, but I'm gonna stretch it as large as I can and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim it so it's nice and neat. So you're gonna see you're gonna have lots of little scrappy bits and sometimes I use those to blend into new and different colors or sometimes I use them for little details of different things. So what I'm gonna do now to make my jelly roll is I'm going to overlap these two colors. So I'm going to line them up as perfectly as possible and I'm going to firmly press. If there is air between those layers, your little jelly roll will separate and you will be frustrated. So what I'm gonna do now is just cut that extra off so that they are the same size. You can see it's purple on one side, turquoise on the other. Now you can roll it up any way. I'm gonna go with the purple on the outside because it's a little darker and it won't catch so much of like any other colors if they're in a container. What I'm doing first is I'm kind of patting down this one side. On our directions, it says to taper the ends. And that's just so that we can get a teeny tiny little curl, like how a snail shell grows maybe, and then let it like roll up the rest of the way. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to roll it and when I roll it, I don't want there to be any air bubbles, so I'm kind of patting it. And sometimes when you roll, the ends will want to like squeak out like a croissant a little bit. And so I'm just gonna poke the ends in every time. And I'm rolling firmly. And then I'm going to kind of roll it together so it sticks on the end. And you can see I've got a little croissant end there popping out. So sometimes the ends will get really funny, especially when you roll them. Like you can see this, it was a flower one, but when it got rolled a lot, sometimes the outside is a little warmer and it squeezes over the top. That's normal. So now I have this lovely cane. And what I can do, if I don't like that little bit there, I can just like take my, oh my goodness, maybe it was just thin there. I'll just blend it in. So now what I can do is I can cut my cane to get a little slice. And when I cut the cane, what I do is I kind of roll my blade and cut very slowly. And then I can open it up and I can see my little spiral design, beautiful. Now, if you do that and your whole design kind of mushes and smears, it could be that your polymer clay is just a little bit to warm so sometimes you can actually take your canes and like pop them in the refrigerator for a few moments just to cool down so they will slice better now at this point what i could do is i could start to cover an object with it so maybe i want to cut some really thin slices so i'm rolling each time 
And if I wanted to cover a little jar or a candle holder, what I could do is just stick that cane right on there. It wants to stick to me a little bit more than it wants to stick to the glass. So I would just stick it on. You could arrange it like I've kind of got one horizontal, then it's starting vertical. So I could go around and just cover the whole glass with this, making it really lovely. Now sometimes once I stick it on, I would also roll it to really embed it to be one surface. If you do this on a candle holder, you want to create a whole skin of polymer clay around the glass. If you don't, if you just have little individual pieces and you bake it on, they're just gonna pop off. So we want it to be covered so it really becomes part of the surface. Now let's say you wanted to use that to make a little bead. Maybe you wanna make a fun necklace or some jewelry. Maybe you wanna make a present for somebody. What I'm doing is taking a little extra chunk of clay that's just kind of old and scrappy, and I'm not getting too big. Sometimes you start a little bit smaller than you want because you're going to actually add some layers of clay when we add our cane slices. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut some nice thin slices. So you can see where a flat edge razor blade would be very beneficial but you might have some other little tools that you can use. So I'm gonna cut about six slices. And what I'm going to do is I am going to attach them to the surface. So I'm just sticking them right on. If I feel like they're not big enough, sometimes I squish them to make them a little bit thinner. As long as we've got the design on the outside, we shall be good. Put that one there and I'm kind of pinching it to cover up that under color but then what I'm gonna do you can see they're all on there what I want to do now is gently blend them so that it becomes all embedded and we have this beautiful design and people are gonna say wow how did you get that there and sometimes I like to squash my beads a little bit so I can see more of the pattern and then I would use a toothpick to very carefully kind of skewer the entire bead. So I kind of keep the bead pinched and I skewer it through. And when you do that, you're gonna get a little burr of clay that comes out on this side. See how that looks sharp and it would be a sharp edge? So what I do is I pat that back down and then sometimes I'll go in and I'm just using the toothpick to kind of widen up the hole. A lot of times I like to put them on stretchy string to make bracelets, or if you end up putting them on some kind of jewelry, so oftentimes you're gonna need to have a large enough hole to fit like silver metal fixings and things like that. So that's what I do, and then it's all ready to bake, so I would just put it to the side for now. Now let's say you wanna make a more detailed jelly roll. You can also do something called reducing the cane. So I have my normal size cane here, and I have this other little chunk. And what I'm gonna do with this little cane is I'm going to roll it to make it tinier and more intricate. And when I roll it, sometimes the ends will squish a little funny. I'll try to make it really nice and even. So I'm rolling it tinier, tinier, tinier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off my little end bits because they will be a little funny, kind of mushed on the end. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut my cane into four little pieces. So you can see how when you reduce it, we have the same design, but it just gets smaller. So sometimes what's fun to do is take a bunch of small ones and put them together to make a cane that might have like four little jelly rolls in it. So I'm gonna do that and mush it, kind of pinch it, make sure there's no air bubbles. And then I'm gonna gently roll it, giving myself a brand new cane. And I'm going to slice it very carefully. And then you can see when I cut it, my first large jelly roll has turned into this very detailed, intricate quadruple jelly roll. That's really fun. I think you're gonna like doing this. 
So let me show you another design now that we've done the jelly roll. Next up, we are going to do the pinwheel. And so you might have pinwheel directions that look like this pinwheel here, or let me see, I have a little pinwheel cane, or I also have a version where it's just the squares that go in a different direction. And so you can see, let's slice that, and you can see it better. Oh, lovely. So we'll do this pinwheel here today that has some striped colors and then some plain colors. And so I am going to use, let me decide, I'm going to use a dark green and then a light yellow and then kind of a limey green. So what I want to do first of all is get some chunks that are about the same size. This part is for my stripes. I'm going to condition them, get them nice and soft. I'm going to start to flatten them. I'm going to do the same with my yellow. So I'm going to get my pinwheel. I'm going to move that right there so you can see which one we're doing in case you end up moving the video back and forth. So, my yellow is a little bit dirty, but I'm going to go with it. So, I am going to make this a slightly flatter or fatter thickness this time. Maybe, I don't know, maybe just under a quarter of an inch. As long as they're all the same size, it will work. So I'm trimming so I get a nice, perfect little square or rectangle. And I am going to do the same thing with this green one. I'm just going to roll it to be about the same thickness. I'm going to put it right on top like this and trim off the ends so that we have the same size. So you can see now I've got like a little sandwich. And to be honest, my green layer looks a little thicker than my yellow layer. So sometimes what I would do is I would just very carefully like cut a little bit off of it. And now I want to get it so it's more of a perfect square. I'm going to pinch it down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double decorate now. So I'm cutting it in half as if it's a little sandwich. And then I'm going to place it so that I end up with a striped surface. So you can see it's green, yellow, green, yellow. And I'm kind of neatening it up. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to kind of shrink it down so it's more of a rectangle. Kind of like in our picture where it says pinwheel loaf. And so when I shrink it down, then I can cut it in half so it looks like two little squares. I'm going to cut a little bit off the end because it was squeezing out. A little bit off this end too. And then I'm going to shrink it, get it more, more perfectly square. I want them to be as close as possible, as accurate as possible. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut them in half diagonally. So just corner to corner cutting and moving it apart a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Move it apart a little bit. And now I have my four pieces that are going to fit there in my pinwheel. And sometimes what I will do is I will arrange them. I want it to be yellow on the outside. So I am going to put it right in order. Hmm, I guess it will be green is different than the picture. See how it has yellow there? I think I probably cut that one the wrong way. But I'm going to have yellow, yellow on this side, green, green on this side. And so I've got my triangles kind of moving in that direction like a little pinwheel. And then I'm going to fill in with my brighter green around it. So I'm conditioning my green, getting it nice and mushy. And for this, I want to make it kind of a double square, like I started with with my pinwheel. So I'm just using my fingers. Sometimes I'll take my razor blade and like press it to get a nice edge. So I'm using more of the clay, but pressing it into the form I need. I think it needs to be just a touch longer. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut that into two little squares. And I'm going to neaten up, get that soft edge off. 
to kind of loosely square as I'm going to get them a little bit more perfect before I cut them and put them together. So now what I'm going to do with these, I'm also going to cut those into little triangle shapes. Just like how my mom used to cut my toasted cheese sandwiches. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I can fit these little square shapes right in here. So I'm filling in that negative space. So, ooh, not that way. You have to get it to fit like a little puzzle piece. And if there's a little extra, we'll trim it off before we shrink it down. That one's got to go this way. This is really good for your visual skills. And this one is going to go that way. So I'm going to pinch it all together, flatten it down a little bit. So this is going to be the face of my cane. Right now, my cane is not very long. Like remember I showed you how some of them are very long to begin with? So if I were to keep it this large, I would only get maybe maybe three or four slices. So what I wanna do is I wanna lengthen it. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly pinch it from the sides and then turn, pinch and turn, pinch and turn, keeping it square. And what's happening is I am reducing the size but it's lengthening, it's getting longer. Now, it's a common thing when you're first starting out to accidentally stretch it the wrong way. So you wanna stretch it so we're seeing the sides get longer. You don't wanna take it from the face and stretch it this way. I've seen that happen before. So it could happen to you, don't fret. So I'm just lengthening it. And you can see that what happens is I don't really see the design on the ends anymore because they've kind of mushed and that just happens naturally, but I'm going to kind of pull a little bit now. Keep it nice and neat, as neat as I can. There are many others neater than me. All right. Now I'm going to slice it and we're going to see if our design is indeed there. With this one, I'm not going to roll when I slice because it's a square shape, so I want a nice square cut. And there it is. This one looks better to me than this one. So, interesting. So that is our pinwheel. I think if I were to do it again, I don't think I would use that different green. I think I would go with dark green all around. That might look better, but it's kind of fun. So that's our pinwheel design. Next up, let's see what we shall do. We shall do checkers. And checkers can look really fun. Sometimes, sometimes they get a little funky when they get small. Let me see what colors I was going to use. I have lost some of my colors. I think I'm gonna use a little mushy looking yellow. I'm using some scrap pieces, so they're not the greatest colors, but I wanna have some colors that are opposite and one darker and one lighter so that when it shrinks down, it shows up really nice. Sometimes I just like to work in black and white and do a lot of like black, white, and one color because I just think it can look so bold. Or maybe you want to just stick to one color scheme. Like if you just have like three or four main colors and then you make a lot of different patterns, it's, it has enough variety because of the patterns, but it's unified because of your color scheme. So it's up to you. It's your art. Make it look fabulous any way you like it. So I'm kind of making some little flat pieces. My clay is nice and soft, maybe too soft. The yellow is a lot softer. Sometimes if one color is softer than the other, it can cause problems. So I try to make sure they're kind of the same softness. So what I'm gonna do, those are big enough that I can overlap. I'm just pressing to make sure we don't have any air bubbles and I'm squishing it into as perfect of a square as I can to start with. And that way when I trim, I don't have a lot of waste, waste trimmage. But I'm just gonna cut that little edge off and that little edge off. So precision is important. It's a good chance for you to practice your craftsmanship. My square is not quite perfect, but you can see now that I have a double decker and I want it, the layers to be about the same thickness. On this side, you can see the blue looks just a touch thicker than the yellow, so I'm just gonna slice a little bit off. 
So now I've got like a little sandwich. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half rectangularly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a double decker sandwich. And so I'm looking at this part because it's kind of the face of my cane. And then I'll reduce it and make it longer this way, just like we did with our pinwheel. So this will get smaller. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm going to cut each half in half. So yes, of course, I'm cutting it into quarters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange. So I'm going to flip that one. And then I'm going to take this one out and flip that one around. So I am making the checkered pattern happen. And you can see that one, like this one's a little bit thicker than that one. Oh, so if I don't like that, I could go in. That's why precision is important. I could cut that one a little smaller maybe. And I can see this one's quite a bit fatter. I'm just going to cut a little bit off there and get everything lined up as perfect as possible. Then I'm going to squish it, make sure there are no air bubbles. And what I can do now is I can start to reduce it to make my checkerboard smaller. So I'm just kind of stretching. So now I've got a lot more slices. Of course, they're tinier slices. Let's see how it looks smaller. Oh, nice. I like it, I like it. Now, you could cut this into four pieces as well, and then like put four of them together so you have a bigger checkerboard. I'm gonna actually keep these because I'm gonna use them in a few minutes for another one that we're gonna do. So that was the checkers. Let's see what we have next. Next, oh, I love this one. We are going to make a star. I like how the stars look. So let me choose some colors. I think that I am going to do red and yellow. Maybe I'm gonna do purple and yellow instead. So I'm just getting everything soft. And what I do to make the star is I kind of make it like a little circular thick shape. Like maybe if I'm gonna play checkers and I'm gonna make my second one the same. I have to, this one's a little firm, so I'm gonna soften it up. And so I wanna make these two circles the same size and the same thickness. And then what I like to do is I like to use my razor blade to kind of sketch on a five-pointed star. Now imagine my horror when I realized sometimes high school students don't know how to make a five-pointed star with straight lines. So I'm making one line and then I'm making it look like kind of a triangle. Maybe the start of an anarchy sign. Then I'm going to go over there and then over there. So we're making a five point star. And if you don't like your star, just flip it over and sketch it on the back side or like smooth it out or roll it again. So I'm going to do the same thing for the purple one. This is going to be a two color star and see I think that's a little too skinny. I'm going to flip it over and start fresh. This is going to be a two color star but you could do this and make like a multi-colored star with like all kinds of colors in the background. That would be pretty. So once I have my two stars, what I do is just one at a time, I cut away the negative space. So I'm cutting that little wedge away. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Then I'm gonna replace that wedge with the opposite color. And if it's not quite exactly the same size, just kind of squeeze it, make it fit. So then I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna flip it that way, it fits better. And then I'm gonna to go to my next little wedge and cut that out, being nice and precise. And I'll do that here as well. And I'm gonna continue on. So you could see it would be easy to do a lot of shapes this way. Sometimes I do a little heart this way too. So 
So you're going to end up with two different canes with a star. So I'm just replacing the negative space with the opposite color. Squeezing it in, making sure there are no air bubbles. You'll know if you get an air bubble because when you go to reduce it, it will kind of crumble a little bit. So there we have one star. Now right there my yellow is squeezing through a little bit and if I don't want that to happen I can just trim that off, kind of close it up. Or I could also wrap the whole thing with another color so it has an outline that could be kind of fun too. So there's my star. I'm going to squeeze the yellow there. And what I'm going to do, I can start to reduce this by pinching it and it's elongating. I could even roll then. Let me show you if you wanted to make a pretty color around it. I'm going to take a little blue, make it a little soft, and I'm going to roll it out. I guess I'm pinching it out. And what I'd want to do is just like use the blue to kind of wrap all the way around, just like that. And then when I reduce it, it's going to look a little bit neater on the edges. So it'll have that fun circle of color around it. You could add tons of circles of colors. Sometimes just a bullseye with like lots of color circles looks really great for a bead design. So you'll probably want to try all kinds of different ones. You can find lots online. Sometimes you can create your own patterns. Sometimes quilting patterns are beautiful to use. So I'm reducing that. And you can see my blue didn't really cover everything, but that's okay. So now let's slice it and see how our star looks smaller. There it is. Sometimes I have to pinch it out to get it the star shape. Sometimes when the clay is soft, it mushes, like you can see that one kind of squished. We're just going to get it back into shape. And so you could end up having lots of stars, like maybe I'll want to make slices of those and put them on beads on my jar. So those are the stars. Now our last one that we're going to do is the flower. And so we have a little pattern right here for our flower. And for my flower center, I'm going to use my checkerboard if I can find it. Hmm. There it is. Because sometimes I, I feel like the checkerboard kind of looks like little seeds. Maybe in the middle of a sunflower. So I'm going to do kind of a small example because I don't have a lot of color. So I'm going to imagine that this is the center of my flower. And I might want to make, I'm going to imagine that it's a yellow flower. So what I want to do, I want to make petals that are an appropriate size that I like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my yellow clay until it gets to be like a good petal size that I would like. And so sometimes what I do is I actually pinch my whole cane to be more of a triangle petal shape so it's like smaller at that edge and then it gets wider. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my center sideways and I am going to use that as a length to cut my petals. So I'm just using that to kind of measure and make all my petals about the same length. I'm going to try for at least five petals, maybe six. So it's just going to depend on how large your petals are. It's actually going to depend on how large your circle is in the center and how large your petals are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm looking at it from the face, the part that I'm going to see my design. And I am kind of spacing my petals around, around my little circle. Maybe it's going to be more of a daisy. So I'm placing them. That one seems really large. I'm going to cut off a little extra. I think it got wider there. And I'm going to get one last little petal in there. That one 
is kind of huge too. So you can see I've got my flower and all my petals. But what I need to have now, if I were to mush that, it would just mush into one big color. So I want to have some opposite color in there. Ooh, can you hear the Zamboni driving by? I'm going to use some green because I think it's darker and it will make a nice contrast with that yellow. So I'm going to roll it kind of into a cane at first and then kind of flatten it because I can see that the shape I need to be in the center is kind of like a little rectangular shape just to fit it in there. But I hope I have enough. Sometimes you have to judge how much color you need and that can be a challenge. So I'm going to check it out. I think it can be a little bit thinner. That's good because then I can have a little longer. So I'm going to use one of these petals again to make my length. So I'm going to cut all my little sizes about the same size. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to slide them right in between the petals. And sometimes what this does, it makes you actually space out your petals a little bit more. Like I think I'm gonna be down a petal, that's okay. So I'm just kind of rearranging a little bit, getting those in there. Yep, so I'm gonna use one fewer petal. That looks pretty good. So then what I wanna do, is I still have a little bit of space I'm going to kind of just simplify it and mush it together a, bit, a little bit more. And so then I have my basic flower in my center. And you can see it's looking pretty good on both sides. I'm going to wrap it now with another color. And I don't, I'm going to mix together these and kind of make a new color right away. So that's why it's good to keep all your little scraps. Mushing, mushing. And maybe I even want to keep it marbleized. That could be kind of pretty. Sometimes you can just make the prettiest marbleized beads, which I think are quite lovely. This could be pretty for the outside of my cane. So what I want to do, I sometimes will just stretch and pull as I go around, just to make sure I've got enough room. And there is my flower cane. And right now that's pretty big. I'm gonna squish it a little bit more. So now what I wanna do is I want to reduce it. So I'm gonna pinch it, pinch it, pinch it. Go slow and careful. Sometimes I'll turn it upside down. Sometimes I just pinch it enough so that then I can roll it to reduce it. I like the looks of that marbleized piece. So you can see again, the ends get a little funny, like they squish over. Sometimes you get some fun, wacky looking little pieces though. So I'm rolling. So you can see that went from being like a big one that was short to much smaller and longer. So let's take a look now how it looks. I am going to carefully slice. This is a round one, so I'm kind of rolling and cutting. Oh, ooh, nice. That looks really good. I'm happy with that. And so then I could definitely use that to either cover a glass, to make beads, all that kind of thing. Now, when you're ready to make whatever you want to make, like let's say you've covered all of your glass, I would cover the bottom too. What you're gonna do is you are gonna bake it in an oven, bake at 325 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. And I would just put it on like a little piece of tin foil so you don't have to touch it to anything. Then remember, wash your hands off. 
put all your things away so they don't ruin any surface they're on. Bake your object. When it comes out, sometimes it's a little soft and flexible at first, especially if you've got like a bigger, thicker piece, if you're making big beads or whatever. But when it cools down, it's going to harden and be perfect. So I think that you will have a lot of fun making all kinds of wonderful polymer clay creations. And I hope you do, and I hope you share them with me. Bye-bye.